Hello, my name is Jason Lee and welcome to the Naturopathic Blog. Uh, today we're going to talk about another topic that's kind of interesting and very important to naturopathic medicine or just health in general, and that's digestive health. So the digestive system, a lot of people, you know, I think of it only relating to bowel movements or evacuation or gastric bloating issues or maybe even heartburn indigestion, but the bowel is such a huge component to health. When you think about it, if the body is like a company, and every single organ in the body is like a division of that company, that company requires income in order to function properly. If there's not enough income, the body can't generate energy, it can't generate um, proteins, it can't assimilate fats, it can't assimilate nutrients, and organ systems start to shut down. So the digestion is really, really key at helping the body extract nutrition from food. So it's basically how the company makes money. So the digestion is all about extraction of material and also how we break down material to a form that can be extracted. And the bowel works kind of like a conveyor belt. So imagine if you go to like the Ford plant, for example, um, you're making cars there, so you have people on the assembly line. So you have somebody that's designed to put, you know, I guess the engine block on the car chassis, and that goes to somebody else, and then they mount the engine on top of that engine block, and it goes to somebody else, and that person puts the tubes together, and it goes to somebody else, and you get the idea, it goes on and on down the line until a finished truck comes out the end. Digestion works very similar to that. When we eat food, it comes into our mouth, and we have to chew it properly. So you chew, chew, chew until the food is broken down properly. Then we swallow that. As we chew the food, the body is releasing enzymes. Enzymes from the salivary glands, from the mouth and other areas to help break down starch. When that goes into the stomach, the valve closes. The stomach starts to break down the food. The stomach releases hydrochloric acid and other compound that helps to break down protein. So now you're churning that stomach juice together along with the stomach also heating up the food to break it down into a compound called chyme. Once that released, it goes into duodenum, and other stuff gets released from the gallbladder, such as bile, to break down fat. So now you're breaking down starch, you're breaking down protein, you're breaking down fat. And when that stuff is broken down to this compound, it then goes into the intestinal system, where it's broken down a little bit more, but that's where all the extraction takes place. During the extraction process, the body absorbs that nutrition, and then it uses it to fuel the company, kind of thing. What the body doesn't want comes out as waste. The problem is for a lot of patients, they don't chew their food properly, so they eat it, very, very fast. They might even drink fluid along with eating it, so the fluid dilutes the enzymes designed to break down the food, and we swallow the food too quickly without chewing. So the food moves into the stomach not broken down properly. If a patient's under stress, or they're taking certain medications, it also depletes the stomach lining of digestive enzymes, including coffee does the same thing. So when you have food coming into that part and it's not being broken down, then here's the problem. It moves from the top part, which is the stomach, into the intestine, where it's not broken down the way it's supposed to, right? So the thing is you have to remember, the top part above the diaphragm, or just below the diaphragm, I guess, where the stomach is, is all about the breakdown of food from the mouth to the end of the stomach. From the intestine onward, it's all about absorption of food. But the rule is you can't absorb in the breakdown area, which is up top, and you can't break down in the absorption area, which is at the bottom. So if food moves from the top part down to the bottom part, not broken down properly, it can't break down anymore. And that's when you have problems because the intestine can't extract nutrition from food that's not broken down to the right form. When that occurs, we get gas, we get bloating, we get indigestion. And the bowel does one of two things. It says, you know what, that's it. Everybody, get out. And it forces a bowel movement, which basically you have diarrhea. And sometimes food even will come out undigested. I've had patients who have passed lettuce, blueberries, different kinds of things, or even meat products. They see it in the toilet, they're like, what's that? That's food that's not being broken down. Or the bowel says, you know what, I'm not doing anything with that. I'm just going to hold on to that and you get constipation, right? Both those methods produce a lot of fermented products which comes out of the gas or bloating or the stomach itself can have difficulty emptying and you get reflux of acid or burping or belching coming out the other end. So these are really important steps to understand because as we don't break down our food properly, we can't absorb properly, we can't absorb properly, we can't feel the body, we can't feel the body, we have problems. The gut is like... Uh, it's a very important organ inside the colon, actually, or the bowel itself. It's a lining that, that spans many, many feet, and it's basically designed to extract nutrition into the bloodstream. So ideally, all the cells are aligned very, very close together, and there's maximum absorption in that area, and everything is all good. The problem is if you eat poor foods or drugs or coffee or other kinds of things that erode the lining of the intestinal tract, it becomes inflamed. When the intestinal tract becomes inflamed, cells start to swell. When they swell, it puts pressure on the gap junctions and desmosomes that link those cells together, and it causes the cells to break open a little bit, or separate between them, forming small cracks 
in the bowel. Now these are microscopic, they're not big enough that food will actually fall through the bowel, but they're small enough where other organisms like yeast and fungus and mold, they tend to grow in the bowel, which feed on food that's not broken down, so it's a leak through that lining, including food antigen that's not broken down properly, so it's leaking through that lining. When that happens, you get antigen that enters into the bloodstream, causing toxic reactions in the body. The whole process of this is called leaky gut syndrome, or what's called semi-permeable membrane syndrome. Very, very key. So the key is to eat healthy and maintain the proper gut lining. We'll talk about leaky gut in another um, vlog of some kind. But this is why it's so important that we break down food properly, we absorb properly, and we assimilate properly. Of course, when we're talking about digestion, we have to talk about bowel movements. Bowel movements are very, very important. Uh, for some people, their thought is, well, if something comes on me once in a while, that's fine, right? Ideally, a patient should have anywhere between two to three bowel movements a day, or even a bowel movement after each meal. The minimum, the absolute minimum is one bowel movement a day, okay? Because in the end, we really eat about three times a day. As something comes into the body, something should come out of the body. So ideally, you eat, 50 minutes later, bowel movement. You eat, 50 minutes later, bowel movement kind of thing. But for some people, they have a bowel movement every other day, every third day, every fourth day. So when you think about it, it's like food going in, 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 out. In, 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 out, when it should be technically in and out. The colon is very smart. Like when stool is sitting in the colon, its job is to extract water from that stool, to reserve the water for the body and make the stool a bit more formed so it can pass out of the body. That's why diarrhea is so dangerous in developing countries when patients have it all the time because they're losing so much fluid. Even though they're drinking a lot of fluid, they lose so much in the bowel movement and it actually causes dehydration. So you want the stool to be well formed, not too dry, but well formed and easier to pass. But the colon's not smart. The longer stool sits in the colon, the more the colon extracts fluid from the stool, which is normal. But if it stays in there for a long time, it starts to extract some of the toxins the body's trying to get rid of. Right? They call it enterohepatic recirculation. So you're basically removing toxins from the stool and flushing it back into the body. This is not a good sign. That's why patients that have chronic constipation where they'll go every four days, every week, or even every other day, feel very sluggish. They feel tired. They might gain weight. They have a whole bunch of other issues, systemic issues too, including joint issues, etc., etc. And that's the interesting thing about digestion. You can eat foods or have digestive issues, but still have normal bowel movements because if the body's toxic, you have leaky gut, for example, you're not going to the bathroom every day, it causes toxic buildup in the body, which can come up with a wide variety of symptoms, such as headaches, fatigue, like I said, joint pain, eczema, big cause of that, psoriasis, other kinds of autoimmune conditions, low immune system, uh, which can lead to chronic coughing that just, just doesn't go away with anything, um, stuff like that. So digestion health or digestive issues, for example, can have a lot of systemic issues in the body. So it's important to make sure that we go to the bathroom every day and we digest the food that we eat properly. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about how to analyze stool. I know it's a very exciting topic, but uh, it's quite important actually. A lot of patients I find, even patients that are squeamish about stool, seem to have no problem once they have kids, because then it's all about what did they poo, what did it look like, did it smell, was it like this, was it like that, okay, they poop, okay, that was awesome. Um, but the thing is, when you get older, we seem to forget how important poop is. It's actually very, very important because it tells us how we're digesting. So to come up with a way of analyzing this, they've come up with a, well, a chart called the bristle stool chart. So it's basically a series of types of different type of stool we can have, and it depends on the type we have, depending on how we digest our food. So ideally, you want type 3 and type 4, but we'll start with type 1. Type 1 is almost a constipation type stool. It's very, very hard to pass. The stool is very pellet-like. These are the ones that people usually have to strain to pass, and it comes out bit by bit by bit, plops into the toilet like a cannonball. That's type 1. Type 2, it's more of a sausage shape. It's a bit lumpy, still very hard to pass. It can be painful for some patients. Um, it's quite large in nature. Type 3, it's still like a sausage, but it's cracks on the surface. It's a bit more smooth in nature. This is sort of somewhat normal, so this would be considered somewhat of a normal stool. Type 4, it's basically like a complete sausage or a snake or maybe a banana. <laughs> totally smooth and soft, very easy to pass. Uh, it doesn't plop into the toilet because it's like an Olympic diver, it just splashes right in a splash. Um, and it's easy to pass. It usually comes out in one to three pieces, very easy to do. And that's where you ideally should have your bowel movements. Type 5, we're now moving into more diarrhea type stool. It's very soft, blob-like. Um, the edges are somewhat clear. Pass quite easily, but it might come up very quickly. Type 6, it's very fluffy, ragged edges. This has almost the consistency of oatmeal. It doesn't form in the, in the toilet when it hits the water. Not particularly great. And type 7 is basically pure liquid. So we don't want anything between 1 and 2, and we definitely don't want anything between 5 to 7. Okay? 
So that's the bristle stool chart. All right, so to summarize, we're gonna go over some final steps. I guess when it comes to digestion, it's important to do the following. Chew your food really well until it's almost liquid before you swallow it. Most people do not chew their food properly. It causes digestive issues. Number two, eat properly. I mean, like diets like this aren't particularly good. Diets like this are a lot better. Whole foods, vegetables, proper grains, proper meats, um, no processed foods or junk, not a lot of deep fried foods, and avoid sugar as much as you can. Once in a while is fine, not every day. Um, also, do not drink fluids with your meals. When you drink fluid with a meal, you dilute the enzymes designed to break down that food in the first place. That's why you never see animals eat and drink at the same time they eat or they drink. And same with us, we shouldn't technically drink and eat at the same time. Um, also, try to keep coffee and alcohol to a minimum you can because it affects digestive function. Other ways of getting great fiber into the body are in the form of flax seeds or chia seeds. Make sure they're ground. The seeds are very small. But when you grind them, you break open the seed, you release the essential fatty acids, and also it provides um, uh, nutritional support for the body and good fiber support that's soluble and insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber helps to clean up the bowel. Soluble fiber helps to soothe the bowel to help reduce inflammation and aggravation to the bowel. If people need additional help, we do have a therapy at the clinic called colonic hydrotherapy. Colonic hydrotherapy is a process where the bowel is cleaned out manually with a technician, and what it does is it helps to build tone back to the bowel. So imagine piping in your home that's been not cleaned in, in many, many years. You build up a lot of impurities around the bowel lining, causing that pipe space to become smaller, and the pipe just doesn't flush quite as well. The bowel is the same thing. Over time, you just build up many impurities around the bowel. It could be different kinds of things we've eaten or, or just sediment over time. And it cakes around the bowel and it makes that muscle not as contractible as it should be. Um, it doesn't expand properly, it doesn't eliminate properly. So colonic hydrotherapy helps to flush all that stuff out to build more tone back to the bowel. So it can help patients who have constipation issues. It can also help people who just want to lose weight. It also helps with metabolism and absorption of nutrition. So it's a fantastic service. And Marina will talk about that next in her blog. Hi everyone, uh, you may see me around in America and I, my name is Maureen McLaughlin and I'm a certified colon therapist here at the clinic. I have been practicing for almost 10 years and going into my third year with Jason and the InnoMedica team. The system that I use for colon hydrotherapy is a very gentle system. It's an auto gravity feed. So it's a gentle flow of water going in and gentle flow coming out. I am with you the entire time to help you relax, which is really the key, and to get a proper cleanse. Many people have constipation issues. We think that because we go once a day, um, that's ideal. It actually isn't, because you can still be constipated going once a day. Everybody thinks, well, why do we do this? The function of your colon is so important, because your digestion starts from the time you eat. Your small intestine is actually 23 and a half feet long and your colon is five feet so the last 15 minutes of your of your digestion takes place in your colon so the purpose of the colon is to give you back to reabsorb any nutrients and minerals that weren't absorbed on the way down to also reabsorb water that your body needs and then to eliminate waste if your diet is not a healthy one uh, and we can talk about that at another time, whereas you're having enough water and you're having enough fiber, then you're not going to have a healthy colon. I can't stress enough how important it is to have, to maintain a clean, healthy colon. The goal is not an empty one, but a healthy one, so that you can taste the food you're eating. You can feel comfortable without being bloated, and you can a, see that you're not, di that you are actually digesting because that's another problem that we run into. We eat too fast. We are just not taking the time to eat. So I see, believe it or not, a lot of undigested food. So it goes back to a leaky gut. Doctors used to call it IBS. It's really not IBS. It's our diet. It's our lifestyle. And we have to really maintain um, the lifestyle to be healthy. Why should you do colonics? To be healthy. Death begins in the colon. We, if your colon doesn't function properly, you will die because all the the other toxins that are that you're trying to eliminate are being reabsorbed. You're tired. You're fatigued. You're not tasting anything you're eating. 
and it is important that even your supplements that you're taking, you're not getting the value of them if your colon isn't healthy. You're just passing it out. So if there's anything that you can take away from my little introduction here today, is to maintain a clean, healthy colon, which would be the key to your optimal health. I thank you for listening, and I hope I'll see you around here at the clinic, and definitely have a healthy, happy lifestyle.